offset for all those those cutouts um, to deliver a, a shadow. Obviously, what it's not doing is it's not casting a shadow from the from the building. But again, this being a painting application, um, it's reasonably easy to cheat that. Um, but again, materials have been assigned within the model. You can see as I move my mouse around up in our material area here that it's uh, it's updating. And this particular one, where you see construct 28, construct 50, um, what it's doing is we've used the construct bar brush to uh, retrospectively apply material definitions to where there weren't uh, material definitions within my model. And uh, you can do with painting with, with a raster texture for the crazy paving around. We've got some, uh, some patio slabs. And we've got a roof lines as well and everything. And there are some smudge effects and things on in here. So hopefully that's, uh, that illustrates not, not amazingly well. That's, you can see my painting scores didn't, uh, didn't shine through particularly in that particular illustration. Um, but it gives you an idea that you can use Piranesi in, in a plan view or, uh, or 2D mode as well. It obviously works best in, uh, uh, in 3D illustration. Okay, we've got had any, uh, a question through from John, which is, uh, uh, when you're making an EPIX file from SketchUp, what settings for resolution and image size do you recommend? Um, really, it's a question of what you're going to do with your finished il illustration. It's a bit, bearing in mind that this is an image file, Again, if your if your end result is going to be something that you're just going to stick as a uh, a 300 pixel square image on a on a web page, then uh, it doesn't need to be a particularly high resolution. But um, you, I'd always recommend that uh, that you pick as high a resolution as as your machine is capable of processing. That, again, this is an image file as opposed to a modeler, uh, a, a model. So it's not going to be as as memory hungry as, for example, uh, this as a as a model. Um, because all we're dealing with is a fixed pixel dimensions. So a, a few thousand pixels in either dimension will give you a, a, great, uh, a great illustration uh, size for, for printing out to, uh, to well, what I would call A4, but uh, you call uh, is it eight and a half by 11, something like that, uh, whatever the American um, dimension size is. So it's, it's really determined, uh, John, by what your, your end result use uh, is going to be for that particular illustration. Um, but certainly, it's it's a, a it's a low uh, memory intensive uh, product in comparison to a modeling application. So it's not designed for use with a or to require, should I say, a really high end machine. In fact, I'm running this off my uh, my laptop. So 24 by 36 inches. Yes, you, this this certainly wouldn't cause you any problems whatsoever. And again, if your finished result is going to be printed, you probably want to be at uh, at 300 pixels per inch. Um, at that dimension, so I don't know what that works out maths-wise off the top of my head, but uh, it would certainly be uh, able to handle that, no problem. So, are there any other questions? Alvin, uh, for darkening the scene, where can you find that preset? Okay, um, I used the uh, a filter option, a brightness filter option, and as you can see, there's a range of different uh, uh, filters available, um, blurring and embossing, um, embossing you probably won't uh, need to use a great deal, but uh, brightness is one I've used where it, uh, uh, my, my selected options are to reduce uh, the brightness down and also the contrast. Obviously, you, they can go up or down. Um, and I'm using uh, I used a hard light option. And again, it's, it's really a case of playing around with the different uh, configurations to see the kind of results that you want to get with any particular tool. Um, Actually, one thing that I haven't covered here uh, in this particular demonstration is the fact that you can use fades. Um, the fact that you, these, uh, the light effect here was actually created with a, a ray effect here, um, that generated this 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 light cast down onto our uh, the ground plane. Um, so paint can be applied with uh, with fades, and it can be um, a defined direction. So in, in linear, obviously, you can be you can be in 3D mode effectively against the um, uh, against the ground plane, or you can um, be in world axes or fixed direction. Um, with with linear fades, um, um, you can do them foreground to background in the same way that you can do them across uh, the face of a building, for example. Um, and the great thing about that is actually that um, in conjunction with uh, with other tools, such as blur, for example, you can blur from foreground to background. So you could have the front of your building in complete clarity and blur using a um, the uh, the linear fade and defining the direction of it by literally just clicking and dragging um, your fade, um, going from your fade, uh, good focus up at the front of your building, out to uh, to soft focus or even out of focus towards the back. So you get a real depth of field uh, deliverable with uh, with Piranesi because it has that depth channel information available. Now, if you try um, effectively fudging 
um, depth of field within Photoshop, it, 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 there's a number of processes involved and uh, it's not an easy thing to tweak. Uh, with Piranesi, um, it's a very, very simple, almost one-click process to be able to deliver. And um, in addition to blurring, though, you can do things like fills. So, uh, I don't know how far I can go back here. Um, for example, if we were doing something like a fold, we would fill. Uh, we could pick uh, a white with um, a linear fade. Uh, have I got my fade open? Yes, open now. So I'm going to be fade. In your say I'm in ground mode, uh, in depth mode, I'm in ground. I'll take a foreground to background now. I think I need to go that way from memory. And, uh, um, I'm going to fade to transparent, and it's going to be a zero color uh, at the end. So um, you can actually fade to another color. So you can blend from one color fade to another color. So fingers crossed. What we've got there is we've got a fog uh, that starts at the back and fades out towards the front of the uh, the illustration. So it's it's using the depth channel information to be able to go from a solid color. Uh, through to um, perhaps fading to transparent, i.e. we're fading fade, effectively the front with transparent. Um, in the same kind of way, as you saw from the other options, there, there's various, you can directional, uh, directionally apply, draw alternative, you do it from the ground. So what I could say is, okay, from ground, ground and upwards, I want to, uh, to use the same to white fog, if you like, with the fade on, and it's going to fade from transparent to, uh, uh, it's from white to transparent, so effectively we get like a ground fog effect. Same kind of idea. And uh, you can use combinations of those. So they're, they're a nice little tool to have, but actually it's, it's the power of the depth channel that's coming through there. You're, you're um, able to apply effects um, using the depth channel information uh, to fade from solid to, uh, uh, to transparent. Are there any other questions? In fact, another, another way that uh, the fades are used, um, which is worth mentioning, um, if you go onto the Piranesi website and look at some of the uh, the sample illustrations that are there, there are some fantastic illustrations through um, available within the gallery. But it's also I'd also recommend going to the uh, the forum. There's a link at the uh, it's, I can probably call it up actually. Uh, there's a link in the bottom left-hand corner. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, I've got it set uh, set for you. If I go to Piranesi.co.uk. And we click the link down at the bottom here, the forum link. Uh, inside the forum, um, which uh, pops out another window, uh, the Piranesi uh, user forum here, and it's it's a very active forum. Um, it's always worth going on and having a look there to see whether or not there's an answer to the question that you need, um, or even post a, a question if you like. The the uh, the forum is very active, and uh, so you'll typically get a great response. We're a UK company, and so if you email us a question, uh, we'll normally email you a response um, very quickly within the same day, normally. Um, but, for example, out of hours, uh, it might even be worth just posting a question up to the forum because uh, there's a lot of expert users that drop in and out of the forum. And uh, and as you can see, in terms of the gallery, people are actually requesting critiques of their work as well, which is a great way.